Domus. Welcome home. Grata Domum. Now, take a moment. Be present. This is a story in the making. Let's write it together, shall we? Familia. Generations linked by time and blood. Act one, meet Game Boy. His destiny was written in the dirt of his neighborhood. From the underbelly of the city to the sun, he rose like Icarus and almost fell. to Geminos. Raised by wolves. bittersweet brotherhood poisoned by envy and ego. Act three, or more. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Although it was not our intention to have this mysterious music uh, with this video because it wasn't our music, it was a little bit more dynamic since we are going to talk about dynamic art. And that screen also didn't belong to us, but the art that you have been looking at is amazing. And this is the panel about blockchain as a medium that will concentrate more on dynamic art. Um, I am Eleonora, I am a digital and crypto art curator. Uh, I started in 2018, and if we talk about, although there are not many artists using this technology as a medium, if we 
start talking about the topics, the topic, the implications, and the artworks that actually already exist, we could be here uh, forever. So I'm just gonna give you a little introduction uh, besides all these fantastic projects that you have seen on the screen. Uh, back then, when things uh, started to happen on Bitcoin, um, and we could mention, for instance, the Rare Pepe project and the counterparty people, the blockchain was so embedded into the art and uh, the creators were so much experimenting with the blockchain that uh, the blockchain was becoming conceptual. And so the token was the art. So if we go back to 2016, the token is the art. And then following, we have all the story that we all know and we arrive until today and we still have a big way to go uh, to experiment with the blockchain as a medium. And um, I would say that the future uh, could look like a uh, smart contract is the art. Uh, I have with me uh, three amazing people in the panel, two artists and uh, one collector, James Bloom artist, Naiko artist, and OMZ collector. Um, the potential that we have been using until now uh, of this technology is very little, uh, but uh, the people that we have here are um, actually exploring this technology in its, at its core and uh, in its concept and uh, what really can be done uh, and in its most uh, highest significance. But I will stop here and I will let them talk. Um, so, I'll start um, just with a general question, uh, just for you to know, we have been having meetings, uh, the four of us, uh, because when you bring up a topic like this, it's very difficult to agree on, uh, uh, like, ideas, and, uh, but also because it's so new that there isn't really, like, a definition. So, we are not here to give you answers today, but to rise debate. And even between us, and it's all people who know this medium very well, uh, we have uh, different perceptions of the blockchain and what it means to use as a medium. So just for um, uh, a question to start for the three of you, uh, what does it mean, Eva, like when we talk about the blockchain as a medium? And obviously, when it comes to create art, and so, for instance, we were discussing, and some of them think that it's a, when an artistic output cannot exist without the use of the blockchain. But I was saying that maybe it is also artworks that use the blockchain to enhance concepts, or maybe it is the both of them. Uh, and so I invite each of you to uh, talk about a project that in your vision, which is um, all the visions are right and correct here, was very important uh, and is very important for this technology to be used as a medium uh, for creation of art. If you want to start, James. Uh. Yeah, um, hi everyone. Um, so I think a lot of the artworks that you're seeing on the screens are examples where people are using the blockchain not just as a, um, as a kind of, uh, a, a, a signal of who owns it and the um, timestamp that it was minted, but they're using the blockchain um, as a kind of a canvas to uh, to express something. And the the blockchain itself is obviously a kind of communally built thing. It's a it's a group endeavor, and uh, as a result a lot of these artworks also um, employ the dynamics of groups. So there's either um, artworks that are created in a group or um, pieces where they're taking data from the chain itself, which is activity that we're all contributing to, uh, or the dynamics of the group of uh, people who own the artworks. And so these, these pieces are really embedded in the blockchain itself and they're doing things that you couldn't do otherwise and as such they're completely new and you don't need you know uh, an art historian to tell you that it's sort of self-evident this stuff can't be made 
um, any other way. My, my own, one of the series that I made, Gold, um, Gold tracks the behavior of its collectors and the artworks change um, in real time according to what the collectors of the artworks are doing on the secondary market. And as a result, someone makes a sale or lists a piece or whatever, the entire collection changes. And so as a result, what you're looking at it is the, the market inside the frame of the artwork. And so it kind of raises the question, are you, are you looking at an artwork or are you looking at the market? Yeah, and it's also, because uh, as erased throughout our multiple debates, uh, even like the medium of the blockchain can be even used as uh, like referring to concepts. Like already the fact that your artwork refers to the market uh, of NFTs is, is, and it's self-referential is also a way to use the blockchain as a medium. So this is just to say that there are artists who uses it, like who use it in uh, its uh, most technological aspect. There are artists who use it when their concept uh, need a technology to express, to serve the concept, and they couldn't do otherwise. And there are other artists who use it in a different way. Um, for instance, uh, Naiko, uh, and then we'll get to your art uh, later, but do you have a project that uh, you feel from your own perspective particularly expresses the concept of blockchain as a medium? Well, okay, maybe not one of my projects first, but maybe one from an artist that everybody knows here. His name is Murad Park. Obviously, he's kind of a controversial artist right now because a lot of people call him a grifter. Look, I don't know um, the truth behind that, but what I know is he's the most famous blockchain as a medium artist right now. If I give you the example of the creation, the creation is basically, he takes the creation from Michelangelo, splits it into, I don't know, like thousands of tiles and decides to sell this on auction. I was the first hater on this. I looked at it and I was like, what the hell? I actually created a collection that was mocking it at first. Um, but then I realized his intention was actually to use the auction. Sorry. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> he, he used the auction as a medium here because the order in which the tiles are minted are actually um, represented by the auction itself, meaning the first NFT minted was the biggest bid, et cetera, et cetera. So he basically put the auction on chain by using the artwork itself. And you could say I'm extrapolating here, but the fact is the masterpiece of uh, the creation is actually one big artwork with all the missing tiles of the tiles that haven't been minted. So it's clear here that his intention was to show the auction through a visual way, and he did it by changing the ERC721 um, NFT standard. So he was clearly, clearly using the blockchain as a medium. And I think he's a great example for people who don't know much about NFTs because he's obviously the most famous and quite mysterious. But we'll talk about many other artists uh, in this panel who maybe uh, are more low-key and even earlier like Rhea Myers and, uh, and many others, but yeah. I thought this yeah. was a good introduction. Many, many other amazing artists. Yes, and Pac uh, really like uh, conceptually using it, not only in the artworks, but how the artworks are played, collectors are played, and now they're introduced to the market. It is already really belonging uh, to uh, an environment and an ecosystem that only the blockchain could uh, create. Um, and then we have OMZ, who I think it's very interesting because he's a collector and he's a different perspective from creators. Uh, so I would love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, what is it? So from my perspective as a collector, what really excites me with this type of art is when the blockchain is used in the creation of the art. So not just as the output. For me, the output's important, but it's complementary in the same way that the narrative, the name, the aesthetics of the artwork are. 
And so just to give an example to illustrate what I'm saying, so if you think about autoglyphs, if you look at an autoglyph, it's very plain, right? Nothing about the visuals is going to attract you as a collector. It's the technical milestone that they represent, how they leverage the blockchain, the creation of the artwork that really makes it valuable. And so when I look at this art and a lot of the artworks that were showcased in the video, we see examples where the blockchain is leveraged in very creative ways. And that is really what I see as pioneering or unprecedented. And just to, I'm going to shout out two collections to the two artists that are on the panel with me, because they're both too modest to talk about themselves. Um, I'll talk about first Burner by James. Burner, the visuals of Burner react to gas activity on Ethereum. And so they incorporate the blockchain in the creation of the art and in the output. And when you see the, the aesthetics of a burner, it also reminds you of the, the process of burning. With the, it's red, gray, black. It's very physical. The animation is very physical. And even the name burner ties into the whole concept. So it's very cohesive. And all the pieces uh, amplify the way the technology is used. Another example is Bitrot by Nahiko. With Bitrot, the art is made up of art from different NFT collections where the artwork is pinned on IPFS. So the idea is when those collections become defunct or are no longer maintained, those artworks disappear from the main art and it begins to rot. So it's a very clever use of the technology to illustrate the idea that, uh, you know, the centralization and impermanence of a lot of the art in our space. And then the visuals tie into it with a lot of crypto-specific imagery and the name Bitrot as well ties into the whole idea of, of blockchain. So it's another example of a very cohesive collection. Thank you. And um, so let's talk a little bit about the amazing art uh, following OMZ, who introduced them, uh, of these two artists who we have here. So James, you mentioned gold and you mentioned burner. Um, we have, uh, so you just launched uh, very uh, a few days ago, a week ago, uh, your last series, uh, Mass, uh, which is um, um, on chain dynamically changing 3D art. Uh, so you took a step ahead uh, also, uh, like uh, with this project. And uh, yes, I would like to ask you. What is your relationship with dynamic art? Because it's very specifically dynamic art that we are talking about here. And also, like, if you can tell us about your last project. So, uh, so I think most most of the work that I do, and it's something that maybe I only realized, like, recently. What I was just kind of thinking, like, what is it I'm doing with these blockchain artworks and. I worked out that essentially I'm making a networked artwork that sits at, in the middle of a group of people. Um, and they're all like that, one, one extent or another. They're all uh, networked artworks. And so in a way, they're a bit like online systems, like a social network or a, a game world or metaverse world or whatever. They're kind of... Um, so anyway, so I worked that out. That's what I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm putting networked artwork at the center of a group of people. And um, with Mass, which is the latest one, which is uh, on-chain 3D, um, it's like a 3D environment and it, it, people share it. And it's sort of the same for everyone, but then it's, it's different for everyone. And, uh, and um, basically, if you buy a Mass token, um, the, the artwork adds your wallet to a list um, and then it starts surveilling you, starts watching what your wallet does on chain. So uh, if you trade a shitcoin or you send some USDC or you sell an NFT, it knows and it will communicate that back to the rest of the group. So it's a bit like social media, it's a bit like an online system, except this system is broken. System's broken. And so there's no clear communication of events. There's nothing that, like on social media, it says, okay, this person said this, and you look at your timeline, that happened, this happened. There's no, like a game, like you know who was shooting at you. It's not that. It's all abstract. So if you're in this environment, you'll notice something changed. 
but you don't know who it was or what it was that they did. And the point of it, the reason I wanted to make it that way, to break it, was because I think a lot of online systems, they're very directional. Like a lot of online systems are kind of like shepherding us into certain modes of behavior. On Twitter, you communicate in a certain way, you get a response. In a game, there's certain things that you do to achieve certain objectives, right? But it's a far, always a finite number of things. So I took a 3D world and, I, I, and it communicates between people, but it's broken. The objects are broken, the communication system is broken, so you know something happened, and you know there was someone else on the other side, but that's all. And the reason was just to try and create a space that people could share where they could just be present to that. So you could just be present to the fact, okay, well, something happened, that was someone else, or this, was, this object started spinning around this way. But somebody, somebody did that. Um, and yeah, so that's mass. That's what that was kind of like the idea. That's and um, when I said like you stoop, uh, you took a step ahead. I meant that uh, from you know either like the reaction uh, to the market or like a personal uh, like involvement with the blockchain or the market. This project seems like it is a, it's a group of people. So it's like the individual in a shared space and so like reacting to each other and also the sense of community that this technology also also uh, brought um, and um, going back to collecting uh, you told us what you think um, collect there are some collections that you love they use this um, medium um, to uh, yeah to create art uh, but also, I want to ask you about the future. Um, like, uh, where do you think that this is going? Like, for instance, like I, I said that I, like, I have the feeling that smart contract is the art will be uh, the next thing. Uh, like, what is your feeling? And even like collecting and having the pleasure of collecting, uh, compare if you can compare to other genre that uh, exists uh, in the space in this moment. What are your feelings about uh, this? Yeah, I mean, the thing that excites me the most about this category of art is that it's the first I've seen emerging from this space that is truly native to the blockchain. And it's the first that cannot exist without the blockchain just on a technical level. And so it has the opportunity to establish itself as a whole new category of art in the broader art world. And for me as a collector, I'm always trying to anticipate what could the future look like. And that's something that would be very exciting. And just to contrast it, obviously, generative art has had a lot of success over the last few years in the space, but generative art's been around for decades. It doesn't require the blockchain to exist. It doesn't add anything new to the greater art world. And similarly, AI art existed prior to blockchain, doesn't require blockchain to exist, and doesn't really add anything new to the greater art world. So that's the thing with this category for me, is it has that potential. Whether or not it will realize it is a different story, but we have the opportunity as collectors to get in very early on something that is still at the very early stages. You know, and we always like, as, you know, and not just collectors, everyone says if they were around in 2017, they would have claimed 100 crypto punks. Or if they were around in 2018, 2019, they would have collected 20 X copy one of ones. It's very easy to say that in hindsight. I see this opportunity as very similar to that in the sense that you have a group of artists creating innovative, pioneering new work some of which has the potential to be historically significant. It's not being hyped. Most of it is priced very excessively, and it's right there. So that's why, as a collector, I've spent the last year or two focusing on this category, and why like, it's an honor for me to even be sitting next to artists like James and Nahiko, who are really pushing the envelope with this kind of art. Yeah, and um, as a curator, um, art is always at the forefront of everything. And this technology is very special. And uh, it also has social implications and the possibility and the chance to make certain things better. And so I also have the feeling that through certain projects that utilize the blockchain as a medium, we also have the possibility, for instance, uh, I don't know, I think about like, uh, you know, life forms. Uh, 
uh, Sarah Fran or like uh, uh, Plantoid, who are like these live farms on the blockchain, to almost like exercise, for instance, um, responsibility, social responsibility. Like if you don't transfer a life form to another wallet in a certain amount of time, the NFT is gonna die. You have a thing which is alive and the NFT is gonna die. So through art, also like experimenting uh, socially and, and, and much more. Um, and I will let uh, Naikon conclude because besides the amazing art that you create uh, and uh, very, uh, I mean, very blockchain uh, hacking, uh, the generative uh, split in two parts where a collector can play and, uh, and uh, be interactive with uh, the artist, uh, etc. But Naiko also created a very special uh, thing, which is a manifesto. Uh, for blockchain as a medium. So, yeah, since it's very special, maybe we can conclude with that. Yeah, um, so I feel like we, we said a lot of things today, but we need to recontextualize, right? So let me tell you a little story. Um, it's a story of the Lumiere brothers. They invented the very first camera, right? So nothing special. And obviously when they did, they wanted to show it off, but they didn't have any footage. So they just went around and filmed the people they saw, filmed the people's lives around them. They basically filmed the very first documentary. It was the obvious thing to do. In one of the screenings of those documentaries, on the very first row was someone very special, a former magician. He was called George Melies. Maybe you know about him. When George Melies saw the documentaries, he saw much more beyond them. He didn't see the video medium as a simple tool. He saw it as a new thing he could tweak. So he basically did that, and he just went around and invented special effects to tell new stories, sci-fi stories, that he wanted to tell. Now, I'm telling you all of that because the way I see it, the Lumiere brothers are a bit like NFT platforms. They helped introduce the NFT medium, but they failed to identify its true potential. You know, I feel like blockchain art has reached a limit. It needs explorers right now. It needs us, maybe, but most importantly, it needs you, some of you in here. Maybe this is kind of the documentary of our time, and somewhere in the room is the George Melies or the Alfred Hitchcock, or even the Stanley Kubrick of tomorrow. So, yeah, I invite you to network you may have similar interests if you're listening to this here. And if you think you're alone doing this, obviously you're not. We're 7 billion people on Earth. So feel free to share your beliefs here. Thank you to these amazing speakers who are part of the creation of the most contemporary art and, I mean, culture, uh, digital culture, but culture uh, itself. Uh, uh, the artists, of course, who are the creator and the lens uh, of spirit of the time translated to us, and collectors and people who support the creators, uh, without whom nothing will be possible. Um, I am sure that we didn't answer questions. We weren't here for this. This is a very new topic. It's all to be explored. Uh, as you understood, uh, there are many opinions around it. Uh, but yeah, we just wanted to raise a uh, debate. And please beware from those who call themselves experts. Thank you. <laughs>